Jane's my biggest supporter. She always has been. She's a very close friend. And yeah, I, I couldn't imagine my career without her. Like I've learned so much just through the hours I've spent with her as, as a person and an artist. It's, it's invaluable. Hi, my name's Jane Dean. Um, I grew up in Sydney. I've lived the most of my life in the suburbs of Beecroft and Cheltenham, which are in the north of Sydney. And I'm 60 years old. Um, these days I work for Country Road, the clothing brand. Um, I work there as a permanent part-time yep. retail sales assistant. Yep. I love fashion. I love um, putting outfits together, yep. um, clashing of patterns, um, earrings. I love uh, coordinating earrings with clothing. Um, and I love yeah, putting outfits together. So I've, I've worked for Country Road for 20 years. Um, prior to that, I was a stay-at-home mum for 16 years. And prior to that, I was actually a doctor. I grew up in a family where my father was a doctor and my mother had previously been a nurse. Um, and there was always high expectations on me academically. And it was quite a strict upbringing. Uh, I was quite sort of restricted in what I was and wasn't allowed to do. So I was never a, never a rebellious child. I was always like the good girl. I met my husband Mark at university. Yep. Uh, we got married at the end of university. Yep. And then we worked together. Yep. <laughs> and then family life started. Um, well, then, then I started working for Country Road. Yes. Yeah, right. because I hated working in medicine yep. and I much preferred working in fashion. Yep. So when I was growing up, I had um, no exposure to tattoos at all. I didn't know anybody with tattoos. I didn't grow up in a friendship group where people were getting tattoos. I pretty much associated tattoos with uh, bikies yep. and gangsters and criminals and um, people on the fringe of society. But then around about the time that I was about to turn 50, I thought, hmm, this could be an interesting life experience to get a tattoo. But at the time, I didn't know anything about tattooing. I wasn't following artists on Instagram. I, I had no clue. And so my 50th birthday passed, no tattoo. So then a friend of mine was turning 60 and she got a tattoo for her 60th birthday. And I thought, well, if she's able to do that, I'm able to get a tattoo as well. And at this point in time, it was coming up to my 30, 30th wedding anniversary. And um, this friend of mine, her husband had got a tattoo done at Authentic Studio. And he said to me, this is a clean studio. This is a safe studio. This is somewhere where you can go and get a safe tattoo. Um, so I turned up there one day not really knowing what to get, but thought, oh, a bit of script, like a little bit of script on my wrist, that would be a good idea. You know, something tiny, something, you know, small. And um, the girl there that um, I met on that day was Nikita Williams, who has ended up doing one of my tattoos that I have now. But anyway, she said to me, no, you don't want to get a tiny little bit of script. You want to get a big piece of script that people are going to see and that it's not going to... Um, disappear as the years go by and she said uh, and I know the artist to match you up with to do this script and that artist happened to be Lance. Uh, my name is Lance Vilbro. I've been tattooing for about 12 and a half years now. work at Little Tokyo. Been here for the last maybe four years now. I first met Jane maybe eight years ago. Um, she came into the studio I was working in at the time to get her first tattoo. Uh, it was a little bit of lettering on her forearm. I believe it was for her wedding anniversary, something like that. And then, uh, yeah, she got the bug real bad. I was thinking, oh, this, this person could be a bit rough, you know, um, could be a bit scary. Um, and anyway, Lance was the complete opposite to that. He was the perfect gentleman. Um, he was a wonderful person. We got on fabulously. In fact, um, I think I developed a crush on him that day. And um, he did the script, custom script on my arm for my first tattoo. Uh, it says, love conquers all in Latin, which I thought was an appropriate quote for my 30th wedding anniversary. And I went away that day feeling like um, 
the most badass woman that ever existed. And, um, and I just loved the atmosphere at the studio and I loved everything about it. And uh, yeah. It started out as smaller pieces, like a lot of more like American traditional style stuff, like things that sort of fit with like her aesthetic with the way she was dressing and stuff yeah. like that. And then I think just the more she was in the studio and like being exposed to like our world and like, you know, we'd get her and her husband to come for shop parties and stuff like that. I think when you see like big work like that, it's hard to turn it down, especially once you get interested in it. And I started to take a real interest and learn about tattoos and who was out there um, doing tattooing. And I thought, well, I want to go back and get a second tattoo, uh, which I did, um, which was the the flannel flowers, because um, the significance of those was I, I spent a lot of my time in the Blue Mountains when I was growing up and we had flannel flowers in the garden. But anyway, that was the, the second tattoo, once again done by Lance. Um, and I really enjoyed chatting with him. And yeah, that's when our friendship really started to develop. Yeah, and at this point, I wasn't thinking about having a back piece done, mind you. And I still, these were just a few tattoos that I was having done with no real plan, yeah, yeah, which was probably a mistake having all of my original ones done on my arms. I think if I was starting again, maybe I would have had a few more done on my legs and left my, my arms for further down the track. See, I wanted them all to show, that was the thing. I thought, well, if I'm gonna get tattoos, I want them to show and I want them to be seen when I'm... Well, at that point of time, I'd been getting tattooed at a studio that did a lot of Japanese back pieces. So I used to see people come in um, when I was there having a Japanese back piece done. Uh, I'd also been to quite a lot of the expos and at, at that point in time they used to have the girls parading at the expo being judged on their tattoos and um, I used to follow a doctor in Adelaide, uh, Sarah Jane Gray, who I met at an expo. And she is actually somebody who I um, admired a lot as, as a doctor, a female doctor with tattoos. And I used to see these heavily tattooed women and I used to think, mm, I think I could do that. It was sort of a, a challenge, like a physical challenge and a bit of a mental challenge. And I also know, well, I knew that Lance hadn't really done very many or if any big Japanese tattoos, he actually, well, he hadn't tattooed any females to do a big Japanese back piece. And I thought, well, if I'm going to have it done, um, I want Lance to do it. He mightn't be the most experienced, but I wanted somebody who I was going to feel super comfortable with. And I've always said that um, I'd rather have a positive tattoo experience um, with you know, a, a, a not so great tattoo. Although this tattoo is great, mind you, but but I'd yeah, rather have so a I'd rather have a positive tattoo experience than a negative tattoo experience and have the most amazing tattoo you know on the yeah. planet. So anyway, this tattoo is amazing, mind you. So um, Jane had a very like strong idea of what she wanted. Like it was very symbolic of of her change while she was getting tattooed as well. Um, it's something that when you have a client for so long, you do spend a lot of hours together and you know you share a lot of stories you become quite close and for me like it's given me the opportunity to like see Jane really like own herself and the confidence that it's given her is really cool. The subject matter I th was tossing up between a dragon and a snake because I thought they're both um, very traditional Japanese subject matter. I finally chose the snake because I like the idea that the snake uh, sheds its skin. And I felt like the analogy of, of me shedding my plain skin and developing colorful skin was a bit like the snake shedding its skin and getting new skin. Because th these tattoos, they've changed me as a person for sure. I mean, I'm a extremely shy, extremely introverted person. And these tattoos have certainly brought out my confidence and, um, and certainly the back piece has brought out my confidence. I was very 
not body confident prior to having this tattoo done. And to even stand there in the studio with just a towel in front of me and my naked back there for all to see was a bit confronting, but um, each time I got tattooed, it would, uh, I'd become that bit more confident about. My husband is a doctor and he also had no tattoos prior to my journey. Um, but he had met Lance on a, a couple of occasions when we were invited to um, a, a party at, at the studio that we were being tattooed, that I was being tattooed at. And he met Lance and once again, Lance and Mark hit it off on a personal relationship basis. And um, we've become very friendly with some people that he also knows down there. And it's, it's amazing the way life can have the way life can work out that uh, so unexpectedly you meet one person then you meet another person and, and I have found that in tattooing this is what has happened to me that I have met so many people through tattooing that I wouldn't otherwise have met and I've gone on to form relationships that have so like enriched my life all because I went in and had that first tattooed. I think that's that's great that they are now way more acceptable than they used to be. I mean, I still think they should be earned um, yeah. and I think the pa part of the pain is part of the process. No uh, I haven't used numbing cream, no. <laughs> that's not to say that I wouldn't and I certainly don't judge people who feel the need to. I, I feel like tattoos are like a extra coating on my skin skin that give me more confidence to go out there in the world and present myself as not just shy Jane, but as confident Jane, confident tattooed Jane. Um, and it has helped me, I think, mix with such a variety of different sorts of people along the way. But, but I also think that tattoo as an art form has changed in recent years as well. It has become more um, of like a tattoo studio rather than a tattoo parlor and the tattoos, tattooists are tattoo artists and it has become about the art as much as, as anything else. I guess I just want to thank all the artists that have tattooed me over the past um, nine years. Um, special thanks of course to Lance. If I had have walked into that studio and he had treated me with disrespect that day and given me a, a bad experience, I probably wouldn't have come back. Yeah. So um, I credit him <laughs> with um, giving me such a positive experience. That, that first experience, I just feel like he, he treated me as, as not, not an older woman getting her first tattoo which he could have. I think he treated me as um, he would, I guess, any other client, young or old, and he made it such a positive experience for me that, uh, yeah, I kept coming back. So, and, and, as, I, and I, as I said before, that first tattoo has led to so many other things happening in my life that I've been so grateful and, and thankful for. Um, and yeah, and thank you to just everybody that I've come across in the tattoo industry that I've really not had a bad experience at all. Uh, I've been very, very fortunate.